Hello and welcome to another episode of the Aussie Rugby Show. Great to have you watching on or listening in. We are a podcast now, of course. I'm Louise Ransom, joined as always by Sean Maloney, Stephen Hoyles, Drew Mitchell. Guys, great to see you. We're at Colleagues in Wallara this week. Sean, Home tell me about it. of the mighty Blue Giants. And are they going along well in 2020? Big win at the weekend against Petersham. Drew's Your club, old second favourite club. And this week, <laughs> double down. This week, guys, colleagues take on Waverley in the Battle of the East, yeah. the big derby it's, game. It's that, a big is, one. that is a very good Running derby. Running around in the Campwell Cup, great club. And I like that we're drinking from the pewters, non-collected of Judd Cup winners. I'm Nick Jacobs, sponsor tonight. Here's to you, Nick. Laurie Ray. Campbell, thank you for a great uh, season. They're a blue jersey, but they're certainly not a blue collar type of team. Very white collar down here in Colleague. Sure. They're, they're coming up against the blue collar team in Waverley. Yeah. I reckon this is a type of club. Good club, successful club, but if you were a tradie, you wouldn't tell your teammates you'd get changed in the car park out of your tradies into your MJ Bale and you okay. turn up here and you tell people you're in finance. That's the type of club <laughs> colleagues is. Great like club. It. Great like it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we love being here. We're very pleased to be here. Uh, we're back from the snow this week, guys. We had a yeah. great uh, Wasn't week it fun, last eh? week. How'd you pull up? Yeah, very good. I'm a seasoned scheming, Lou, so yeah, I'm very comfortable in all terrain. Jeez, it's a long yeah. way down. <laughs> yeah. Especially after a day on the ice, not snow, <laughs> on the rock hard ice. It hasn't no, been a great on. season. It just just let's move. Yeah, anyway, I, uh, I got through this, the, the skiing, okay. <laughs> And then this idiot took me to a classic Wallaby uh, coaching clinic with the kids, which was great, the Jindabyne Bush Pigs, but I'm not trying to run this line against the under-16s. Went off the left and my knee's, uh, my knee's gone. And it proved right. Don't ever give back, Drew. Yeah, the second exactly, you start yeah. giving back to the Some, kiddies... Yeah, the moment I start giving back yeah. to grassroots, I Honestly, blow my knee out. hit his unders line, tried to tell a 16-year-old yeah. where to be, what to do, and bang, he skied for two days straight, fine. <laughs> Then his, when, when his meniscus is gone. Yeah, I'll see a surgeon next week. So thanks to the bush bags, I'll be sending the bill. And actually, maybe the classic wall is, I hope you got insurance. Yeah. Well, that's more, was that, yeah. And you're the new knee boy. I'm the new knee boy, yeah. You've got two knee boys. Yeah. You're knee boy number two. Lost a bit of hair on the way as well. Yeah, yeah. I, um, yeah I've had my little COVID little moment uh, a little bit too late. And I've realised that you just don't shave your head when you don't have any colour. Like, I need a bit of tan. I, I look ill. Yeah, I you want to say. say. Yeah, look, you I don't look, look like the best no, version of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thanks. I hope in a no, couple of weeks. In a couple of weeks, I'll previously, uh, I'll like be back. Casper the ghost, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Just ooh. <laughs> So it's anyway. with the foreign <laughs> Guys, what got you from over the weekend, Sean? Kick Do us you know up. what got me? What, Sean? Uh, on that 48-hour round trip to the snow <laughs> from Sydney's northern beaches, Urban Dictionary. Oh <laughs> what yeah. What a find. What was your favourite one? Oh, there's a couple in there. I'm addicted got me to on it. That. Yeah. I'm addicted what was it? to it. Um, the rusty oh. trumpet. Oh. <laughs> no, there was a the there was a pirate. There yeah. was uh, some kind of an eating situation. There was a lot going on, <laughs> on that front. Kids, what, don't really, search for that. Yeah. Parents, you're allowed. What really got me though at the weekend was the coverage out of NZ Sky New Zealand. Sir JK, one of my absolute favourites. You won't find a better guy. One of the great players for the All Blacks. His dress sense has gone to a previously unseen level on air, and I applaud the Sky bosses for encouraging him. And I reckon we get to nominate what he wears on camera for the North v South game. Ooh. You think he'd actually listen to us I nominating him? I reckon Sir JK. Wear. Would. He's got fashion sense, I'll give him that. And, yeah. and you know what? I'm glad that he's doing it because he's not just turning up to wardrobe and saying, what, what am I going to wear tonight? <laughs> like you, Sean, you're dressing yourself, you're Mate, forgetting shoes every week. I, I tried that at the box. I said, I'm not wearing that. Said, and look what happened. You know what? You're not wearing anything. You're not wearing <laughs> What got you? What got me? I watched the uh, John Dent Cup game, the Young Brumbies Academy prop. Yep. Fred Cahir, his name is. Yep. Try assist of a lifetime for a front rower. He runs 40 and then puts it on the toe that goes another 30. Uh, I just thought it was a fantastic props try, so that's what got me, Sean. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm going a little bit global. I, our friends up in the Northern Hemisphere, the English Premiership was back. We saw uh, them getting back into it. No crowds, of course, but they were getting into the, into the action. But also, more specifically, a try by uh, Exeter Chiefs hooker Luke Cowan Dickey. He, he must have worked so hard driving over, but as his teammates were helping him up, as he was sort of about to celebrate this try, he has just absolutely regurgitated everything that was inside his stomach and just spewed all over the, I think it was over his teammates back no. when he was getting up. But, I mean, there's, there's some footage there of it. I mean, it's fantastic. I, You've look, been there. I've been there. I, I can empathise. My first game against the All Blacks was my first start, scored a try. 
I was a bit nervous going into the game. Tan had kind of called me out in the pre press saying we're going to target this young bloke, fullback. Would make most and I scored this nervous. try and I went back to halfway and I just... <laughs> and just and uh, I've got this really nice picture. You know, you can see the 15 on my back, hunched over having a spew. So, Luke, I'm with you, bro. Mm. Mm. Um, I've got you, Luke. Yeah, thanks, Drew. <laughs> uh, shoot Shield over the weekend. Loved an epic game between Sydney Uni and South Uni. Uh, looked dominant for most of it. South's just getting it done, kind of five minutes worth of stoppage time. The guys on the sideline from South's cheering the boys on as they sort of rolled over the, the try line. So it was the best nice, game of the year, game. I think, Easy. for Shoot yeah, Shield. Yeah. It was so five good. Minutes in the and everyone loves to beat Uni. Yes. And on at the Uni. uni. Yeah. Or especially at Uni. That's what I say, at yeah. Uni. OK, guys, Super Rugby, Rocks and Diamonds. What you liked, what you didn't like from the weekend. I'm going to go with TMOs. Uh, rocks and Diamonds for TMOs. I thought in the first game on the Friday night, the Tars versus the Force, some, some TMO decisions that I th found difficult to digest. The Jake Gordon disallowed try yeah. really frustrated me. At first, I don't think he did anything wrong. Two, it was potentially one of the tries of the year. That got, that got me a little bit annoyed. But then the flip side, the following night, the speed of the team over between the Rebels and Reds game and the accuracy, I thought that's exactly what we want. Get in, get out as quick as you can. At, at the same time, you've got to get it right. But, yeah, uh, of course. I, I think thought it was some, good. Yeah, like you say, it's a consistency, you know, consistency of it. But also, sometimes I just feel like the TMOs try to find a reason why it's not a try, yes. as opposed to just going, look, you know what, like, Andrew Reddy in that case, in the oh, Waratah one, he, was, the, he wasn't making that tackle. Like, was, even though he was maybe obstructed, yeah, I get yeah. that, but he was never getting yeah. there. Yeah, like, and, and that was, some that was two tries to the Tars where I looked at and I thought, again, that, they were good tries to watch. And that's what yeah. we want to be on highlights reels. We want to see those type of tries. Tell you what else was good to watch, goes into my diamonds, was Jack Maddox's performance yep. on the weekend. I thought he was, uh, you know, he was in everything. He was setting up tries, he was scoring tries. He, he just looked really comfortable. I thought it was his, by far his best uh, game in the, in the Sky Blue jersey, but also at fullback. But I think even further than that, I think the stocks of the back three, I think we're starting to get a really good position. That, uh, young Ram as well on the other side, on, on the right edge for the Waratahs. Um, and then you look at Dungunu and you've got Banks and you've Jock got Campbell Carter. Campbell outstanding and you've, for yeah, the Reds. Yeah, it's just yeah. like everyone's literally standing up. And, and yeah, even um, you know, there's a couple, is it um, Ryan uh, Ralston from the yes, Western yes, Force? Yep, yep. He's going strong. So there's, there's, there's people putting their hands up. And it's, what, what I like about it, it's going to make it difficult for David Rennie. And that's what you want in every, every position. You want to make the selectors' jobs difficult when come you know, the Wallaby selection time. And I think at the moment, these younger guys are coming through, but also the seasoned guys like your Dane Helipetis of the world, they're also stepping up as well. So I like the fact that there's pressure on these, like, you know, from these young guys coming through on the incumbents. But Mirika Korobedi as well. I mean, there's just so many there. Ram, I reckon Ram, big. of those guys, has exploded this year. Yeah. So, Seen him come through that Aussie 20 set up, but his touches, he's always asking questions, and he's effortless the way he moves yeah. through traffic as yeah, well. Nice hands. Nice balance. I Happy saw somewhere, it might have been online, someone made a comparison. It's a huge comparison, but it was Joe Roth, but it's, it's but Joe Roth made things look very easy. 100%. And yeah. that's what get Ram's got. I'm not saying yeah. he's anywhere near that yet. No yeah, pressure yeah. on the kid. But Similar frame. Yeah, yeah. He's tall, he's leapy, he's got, yep. yeah, but he just, he, he makes things look effortless. And yeah, that's no, I'm a with nice you on thing to watch. I'm yeah. with you on that. And really what good my rock was is, um, I said it last week, I'm looking forward to Razor's dancing. Um, oh, yeah. Scott Robertson with the, the coach of the, the Crusaders. After they, um, they won the New Zealand Super Rugby. And then the game was cancelled yeah. and we didn't get to see him dance. Do you think he'll just upload a clip for us for next week, maybe? I think he should. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps he can go into JK wardrobe. <laughs> 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 just spin around, get a bit of a circle uh, going. We're asking a lot. Another <laughs> reason to chin COVID, wasn't it? Oh. Costing us a nice... Yeah, that, that would have been blues. And Berlin, also, yeah, that game would have been. Yeah, so it would have been easy. a rip. That was a sellout, wasn't it? Yeah. Was a sellout. I mean, you'd cop an extra 15 cases or so <laughs> just for that game. I reckon I would. I'd put my hand would up you? and top it. Return yeah. travel style. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know about that. What got you, Sean? Uh, <laughs> rocks no, and diamonds. No, we're on the rocks and diamonds now. Uh, diamonds for me was just the three giants going out on the weekend: Pone, Thor, and then Caboose Eloff in the pink. Oh, Budgies. Yeah. Yeah, so, like that. so he blows he blows the stubbies out. They yeah. were very tight. Oh, they're very tight. <laughs> and he's very tight. And he's um he's just this big rampaging South African prop has come over going well there. And then he got a carry on the after you get the short shorts. Oh, on, that was a good carry. Oh, a super tight. The 22, <laughs> oh, the, the goal line dropout. Yeah, yeah. So three stars. Just landings, and he's just hit, wound up big style, but like his legs were a little restricted. That was my diamond. Uh, Rock was that game between the force and the Tars. That was one of the biggest bludgeoning games I've seen in a while. <laughs>
And if that went into a time capsule, I would set fire to it in a second. <laughs> See, I can always sense when I think, oh, hang on a second. I think I've always sensed when Maloney likes a lot of points scored in a game yeah. because he might have had an exotic bet that weekend. <laughs> no, no and betting. disallowed tries no when betting. you're going overs. No betting. Doesn't make this man happy. No betting. I just thought, I was like, oh, come on, guys. Like, I, I appreciate that. The force been away from home for a while, but there were so many chances in that game for there to be plenty more points. Just quickly on your uh, on your diamond, I, I think one of the, the real good things that have come out of the the, um, the law variations and adaptations that we're trialling in this uh, Aussie Super Rugby is the goal line dropout. Yep. We've seen so many, especially from the Rebels, putting their big guys right yep. at the back and just letting them come run. off the long run up, just yep. come in. We've, we've seen, you know, it's created some real highlights in uh, in this Super Rugby. Yeah, yeah. Your highlights? Um, I'm all positive this week. My uh, diamond, Jordan Pattaya, back for the Reds after a really, uh, you know, awfully em emotional sort of week beforehand, scoring for the Reds and doing it quite nicely. So great to see him uh, back. Jeez, he's classy, isn't he? Yeah. You didn't mention him in that. He played on the wing. He's well, probably yeah, a centre, exactly. but I mean, well, I mean, he's only sort of played, a, 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 I think, a couple of games. Yep. And he's going to be another one that's going to be... I mean, he's Did definitely going to be there. Did we mention Campbell before? Yeah, yeah. I mentioned him before. Oh, he was him. great. So yep. I'm going to call him Shock Campbell from now okay. on. Well, you do that. He does. Yeah. Yeah. Shocks you. Yeah. He's good. Yep. Yeah, there's so much depth there. But, yeah, it's great to see Geordie back. And, and we just hope that he's, um, you know, put some good games together because he's someone that, like you say, he's just got class in uh, every facet of the game and, and we want to see him in that gold jersey a bit later in the year if we get to see some of those yeah. games. Well, the big stories of the week. The Rugby Championship looks in some doubt because of the situation with COVID in New Zealand that has happened uh, in the last sort of Seriously. week or so. It's just ruining everything, isn't it? But yeah. now, I guess, the options being thrown up. Let's let's talk about a couple of those. First up, a five-test Bledisloe series, which Drew, you kind of suggested a few weeks back. Yeah, that was when they were talking about potentially playing a four-game series for Bledisloe. And I just thought, like, that's moronic in my opinion. Like, why would you have four? I think... Any of those types of series, if in the if in the off chance it's going to be two all, like you need an outcome. It's either it's either three or a five game series. So I like that as an option. It is a five game series. Of course, we'd prefer a rugby championship with South Africa and, and Argentina involved, along with Australia and New Zealand. But uh, as we've found out through COVID and, and the year of 2020, you don't always get best case scenario. So we just got to live with it. But Steve. It's, it's bigger than that. It's, Australian rugby really needs to host a couple of these test matches, don't they? Yeah, even though we'd like to see South Africa and Argentina in five games against New Zealand is financially probably the best outcome for Australian rugby anyway. And, and where those games are played, if they're all played overseas in New Zealand, well, that, again, there's got to be a, probably a bigger split that's got to go to Rugby Australia. But rugby in Australia needs those games to go ahead. We need a series against New Zealand. We need as many games as possible just to keep our head above water. That is so important financially and where they play them, there's so many different suggestions at the moment. It's almost irrelevant in, in my opinion where they're played, they've just got to be played. The other thing that makes me think that it's, we're getting closer and closer to it not happening is South Africa aren't playing rugby. Yeah. Yeah. So are they guys yeah. who in the Northern Hemisphere have just resumed like you mentioned at the top of the show? RG. No one's No one's playing any footy and when you see what New Zealand have put down and now even some of these Australian performances, there is such a disadvantage trying to match yeah. it with them. I mean, they would be coming in rusty, lack of care. Oh, it'd be a disaster. Yeah, so you're probably then hinting that maybe you're happy with the five team? Oh, five I think games that's the go. I think that's the go. There's talk of a hub being in Queenstown. That's probably high risk <laughs> more than anything. Yeah. <laughs> you're sending any rugby side to Queenstown for five I'm doing weeks. I'm my best to come back if that's the case. <laughs> you're going to have to get that I'll surgeon pretty quick. Stuart, I'll be anything. I'll, just I'll, be, I'll happily cop a three grand quarantine bill going <laughs> over there for a chance to be around that. Good ski fields there, Sean. Oh, we should get there. Delicious. <laughs> Well, let's talk some uh, England rugby with a bit of an Aussie twist. And former England captain Dylan Hartley this week said that uh, his time under Eddie Jones was brutal, but also that it was one of the best coaches he, he's ever had. Sean, can you give us a little bit of context? <laughs> well, it was, it was his departure essentially from the England squad around the World yep. Cup. And Eddie just rang and said, can you get that knee, boy? <laughs> he just said that to him on the said, phone as a lead-off. What did he, he said, say, Drew? He basically said, uh, yeah, Dylan, it's Eddie, mate. Yeah, you f***ed, mate. <laughs> there you go. Basically just... I mean, but that's what you get with, with, with Eddie, right? Like, you're anyone that's exactly been coached by him, stood, like, yeah. you, you, you got brutal honesty. And one thing as, as, as rugby players we always ask for, because so many times you get told the, some rubbish story, like, oh, it's a rotation yep. policy, or it's this, or it's not that. We're just going to give someone else a go. We're going to give you a rest. All, all that rubbish. So what you always ask for is brutal honesty. And one thing you got from Eddie was brutal honesty. And, and sometimes it, it made you uncomfortable. Sometimes it made you embarrassed. Sometimes it made you upset. But the one thing you knew, you knew exactly where you stood. And I think that's why a lot of people that have been coached by him, whilst it was brutal, 
like they would also say that he's one of, if not the best coach yeah. you've had. And, well, uh, and I think that's probably a big only, reason why. We only had him very, for a short period of our career, like yeah. 2004 and 2005 was, we went on the first, we were on our first Wallaby tour together. So it yeah. doesn't matter who your coach is, when you first pick, you're yeah. sort of, you're in awe of everyone. Yeah. But he just ran a very tight ship. He all, but at the same time, like he still had the ability that when you were walking out of the shed, you wanted to play for him. I always think that's one of the greatest attributes a coach can have, is you, you don't want to let that person down. Like throughout the week, yeah, he was brutal on you and he made a lot of people nervous and he put a lot of people under, under the, the lamp, but he made you want to play for him in, in many people's um, positions. When can we have the night on this show where we recap the press conference from 2016? Yep. When can we deep dive it? When we can have Lou step you through when it all fell apart. We can maybe that do press a I think, I think it needs a full episode <laughs> on its own, Sean. Why don't you start with the words that you gave me before we, before think, we went in? I think Moist was in there somewhere. Yeah, that like. was one of the good ones. Moist. Yeah, that was a slippery. Might have been in there. Uh, yeah, that we'll, was there. We'll, we'll Rump, you're Rump right. There. Rump, but we'll do that yeah. at some point. I remember one story. Dave uh, Fido, yeah. the Wallaby prop at the time, he was. Already played a couple of tests. It was the next season. He was travelling through the domestic airport with the Brumbies, and Eddie happened to be at the same airport. And Dave Fitter just stopped off to get himself a donut, Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme's at the Sponsorship airport. Sponsorship opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> and they reckon he got it like out of the bag and just his fits, and he just went threw him straight in the bin. Just went, <laughs> he knew straight away who it was and what he was in trouble for and he didn't have a bite, he threw the donut straight in the bin. Uh, I bet he still licked his fingers though. <laughs> he would have gone back from where Yeah, for sure. Um, guys, big uh, game in New Zealand coming up north v south. Uh, weak teams, yeah? Well, do you know the background <laughs> of it, Sean? When was the last time this game was played? Well, I, I tell you what, it's, it's to replace... You're the, you're the Keith Quinn of Australian rugby, so you should be talking us through this here. I've got the right footwear on. Uh, it's basically replacing the possible probables game yep, yep. that they've had. And I, I was there, I was there in 2005 playing in NZ at the time in Hawke's Bay when they had Siva Vatu, yeah. all those guys, like full strength, possibles, yeah. probables, and it was insane how good the game was there in, uh, in uh, Hawke's Bay. So now we've got North v South, and those two teams, my God, oh. they will take on most international yeah, teams yeah. and probably go close, very close. I mean, both teams. I've got tremendous depth. They've got a good blend of, of uh, youth, but also experienced players. I mean, it, it's frightening just how, how many people they could sort of pick and, you know, effectively they could pick two sides that would go really well internationally. But, I mean, it's, it's what people want. It's also giving, um, you know, rugby supporters extra games yeah. to watch, something else to get excited about. And I know that over here in Australia, we've been talking about the potential for a state of origin, which I, I think is rubbish. Yeah, I don't like the yeah. state of origin concept. I, I think Australia the state of origin is so good in the other code in Australia because they play domestically at a club mm. level, then they go and play for their yeah. state. We're already playing at a state level. Yes. You're asking someone, for example, I know that he endorsed it, Carmichael Hunt, but he's in a War Waratah leadership group one week, mm. talking about playing with pride and passion for the Waratahs, and the next week, would most likely be in the leadership group for the Queenslanders yep. wanting to go again. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. And I also think it's really... It's almost everything that's wrong about Rugby Australia in the last sort of 10, 15 years, thinking that the game just revolves around New South yeah. Wales and Queensland. Um, and I think something... Like, I know there's someone on Twitter, they tweeted us in, uh, threw out a, um, a suggestion for city versus country. Yeah. Because everyone in Australia mm. is, is either, you know, grew up in a city area okay. or a country area, and that means everyone... In, you know, in our land can, uh, you know, can be picked for one of those two teams. I know there was another option. Yeah, Rugby well. Reg, Fred yeah. Roberts, he's a wonderful contributor to uh, commentary around rugby in Australia. Came up with the idea of just drawing a line, boom, straight across the, the continent tweet. of Australia. Straight across boom. the Boom, oh, maybe, do you reckon a bit, was it a bit lower? Yeah, it was, oh, it was down low. Somewhere it, around there, though. Some of the New South Wales. Kingscliff, maybe? Yeah. yeah, pretty close to Over the Over to Kalgoorlie. Yeah. Yeah, there you go, over. north and south. Yeah. And they're the same, have the same concept. And you get yourself a nice little game there, too, if you put a line through the middle. Yeah, I'm, I'm in a similar opinion to Drew. The state of origin, I don't think mm. that concept worked because that's what we have with Super Rugby yeah. and we now have it three times this year and in normal years we have it twice. I think, yeah, what about the people in Perth? What about the people in Canberra, Melbourne? It's Tassie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tassie, don't forget the Tassie. Yeah, yeah so um, my only concern with the, the, uh, the New Zealand option is it just opens up a can of worms for another thousand people, now a thousand all-black trialists. Do you ever remember when you were at a school oh, or a yeah. club and someone turned up and they were an all-black trialist? That's always, people would always come over yeah, from New Zealand you've got that tag now. and they were just all-black trialists. Every <laughs> Kiwi person that ever came over to the club were all-black trialists. You couldn't prove them wrong, but with today's social media, I think you can prove them wrong. So I'm okay with the North vs South happening. And you know, maybe, maybe it's going to be really good for New Zealand rugby over the next 10 years. Mm.
Gone but not forgotten. A time where we remember some of our favourite rugby players for their efforts both on and off the field. This week, we're going to talk about Radiki Samo. Yeah, we are. I love DK. I love big DK. And I, my story isn't even him in Wallabies colours. I was playing against him. He was playing for the Canberra yeah. Vikings down at Viking Park, playing for Manly. Josh Manray, the great Bongo, is playing love with Bongo. Manly. Comes across in cover to try and get DK. DK's charging out the park. He has the biggest hands you've ever seen, holding the ball in one hand. Bongo goes for him. He breaks Bongo's nose with the ball. Slams it into his face, face full of guilt. What broke a nose for the Bongo man? DK runs off and scores. The most incredible thing Probably I've ever seen. Probably with a smile on his face. That's what yeah. I found so I think he was about laughing. Him. He was often running at you and somehow <laughs> making you scared, yet still smiling at you. Like, yeah. he just toyed with you. That's oh, he was he so but good. He, I mean, he was so versatile. Obviously, he's a huge human being, playing in the back row for a lot of his career in the Wallaby Colours. But, I mean, we all remember that try against the, uh, the All Blacks up yep. at Suncorp. But also, I remember in uh, 2011, the World Cup in New Zealand, we had like a... We were decimated with injury in the back line and, and DK started yes. the game in number 14 jersey, played on the wing and played <laughs> super well. Like he just didn't look out of place other than the fact that he was four foot tall and then he's yeah. opposing winger. The little Russian man was just like trying to jump up on these crossfield kicks. But I mean, he was, he was so versatile because I mean, one, he was super quick, but he just had skill. He had the offload, like you say. I mean, he's but a great you, man. You talk to so many okay. Fijian players on the seven circuit and you say, oh, what position are you? And they it's, it's just complete honesty. They go, back row wing. You're yep. like, sorry? <laughs> back row wing. <laughs> Hang on, so you're that big, but you can be that fast. Yeah. No, no drama. And he was one of many back row wingers yeah. from Fijian rugby. Gone, but not forgotten, DK. Aussie Rugby Show, mailbag time. Thanks so much for sending all your questions in. Plenty this week. Very full, this mailbag. It's jam-packed. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep going, I'll keep going, I'll keep going. Uh, I'm going to get to the first question. It is full. It's jam-packed. It's, we're going to go deep here with these. Uh, OK, so our first one comes from Kanga Brew. Ha ha. Uh, controversial opinion, says Kanga. I don't think the Kiwi sides, other than the Crusaders, would manage to make the top three in Super Rugby Aussie at this particular point <laughs> in time. That's a flog tweet. Get I would out back of it. the Brahms, Rebels, Reds, and even the Tars to beat the other four New Zealanders. Do we buy into that? Be no, I don't Kangaroo buy into that. But he's a good supporter of the show. So yeah, Kanga, but that's Kanga a flog tweet. Tweet. I think a lot of people, and you know what? It's, it's good that people are talking positively about Australian rugby. Oh, the game's yeah. been good, but I think we've, at some stage we've got to put the Kool Aid down and drink the water okay. and realise that. You know, New Zealand... I'm not putting it down, yeah. mate. <laughs> yeah, I, I just think um, that's okay. very optimistic of yeah. Kanga. But good on him for having yeah, a go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's probably going to be yeah. the last Who's, 20 cents. Yeah. Actually, I, I've gone out and uh, reached out to a couple of friends, a couple yep. of players and uh, some that are playing in the current Australian rugby, um, Super Rugby setup, but also yep. one here from a Willie Genya. Hey, guys, Willie G here. Uh, love what you guys are doing on the show. Absolutely killing it. Just wanted to ask a question. Um... Who do you think trains harder out of forwards and backs? Hoping for an impartial view, because obviously I'm a player, I'm a back, probably a little bit biased, but yeah, obviously forwards do a lot more contact when it comes to training, like the scrums and walls and unit sessions, and the backs do a whole lot more high-speed running, so different levels of um, toughness, I guess, but really wanted to get you guys' opinion on who do you think trains harder? Uh, okay, question. it is a good Great question. question. Well, you'd expect that from a bloke who's... Yeah, Will Genia, I guess. What do you think, Drew? Ah, uh, look. In terms of probably harder, depends on what you, yeah. you rate as harder. I, yeah. I think longer forwards are always out yeah. there, much longer than what we were. They're always doing the uh, the, the, the driving scrums and lineouts and, line line yep. and all that rubbish, yep. and then still wouldn't yeah. hit one on the weekend. <laughs> I don't know what they were doing in those sessions. We just sort of get in, get our stuff done, get off. Yeah. We drop the balls at training, we drop it on, on yeah. the game, like we're consistent. <laughs> but I, I think, you know, high, high speed running metres, that's where we're probably under the most duress. That's on what we did most at, at training, whereas, you know, the, the piggies, as they yeah. affectionately know, and they, you know, they don't really hit too many high speed metres, but what they do do is a lot more contact work and, and probably a bit more under duress in terms of, you know, like muscle fatigue and that type of thing. What yeah. Do you reckon? yeah, I always like, being completely honest, I always admired the fitness of a halfback when on the field, when you realise that, they basically have to get to every ruck. I found that just at certain times when you'd see players running past you, then they're just everywhere. Like, you really took note of how fit a halfback was. But at the same time, you'd always note on a Wednesday a day off, you'd come in for some treatment. And some front rowers in particular, they just couldn't walk properly, you know, like what yeah. they put themselves through. So I'll probably lean towards a split between a halfback from sheer running volume and just the... You know, the front props have to hit, lift heavyweights every week, whether it's part of their psychology to be right for a scrum. But they put themselves in some Mate, dark places. If you've got 
front rowers that are worried about their, their jerseys coming up because it might show their mayday guts, then they're not training yeah, yeah, hard. Exactly, they're yeah. not training hard. I'm yeah. going to say I'll, backs. I'll, Willie G, the backs, brother. Oh, man. What are you going to say? I had a great story. Yeah, do yeah. it. Jeff Parling, uh, yeah. who coached with Will yeah. at the Rebels, uh, said that when he first joined Leicester, known for their hard nosed approach, yeah. in you go. 50 scrums yep. live off the bat. So two opposing packs. This is training, yep. 50 live. Yeah, yeah. First session of the year. Yeah. In you go, get stuck yeah. in. Whoever's still standing can play on the weekend. Well, that was Leicester. That was why they yeah. won the title. Yeah. They just scrummed yeah. and punched. So I reckon forwards, yeah. of course. I've got one for you, Drew. It's from a former Queensland Red scrum half and Big Brother contestant season one, Damien oh, Who. Damien Who, the Hooey. 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 He's got great charisma. A, a lot, he's got a few things going for him, does the Hooey. Yeah. Uh, here it is, all oh, the way from of... Singapore. Yeah, Drew, you came into the Red Squad in 2004 as a young pup. Must have had a surprisingly lot of downtime after training those years. I know you and Josh Valentine were particularly close. I mean, what would you say were some of the wildest things you boys got up to when you weren't training? You oh. and Valo. Yeah, look, we, we? we got up to some wild things. We used to live in a place uh, in Kangaroo Point. Um, you know, both of us sort of young fellas, strapping young lads, just living, doing our best to make ends meet and... Oh, look, I don't think there's but hang on, much you, that we you were getting really paid say. to make ends meet, so <laughs> yeah, you're already so. making ends meet. No, but so, I mean just feeding ourselves yeah, okay. and having a nice night to sleep and whatever. I think Huey's trying to get me to say some maybe some uh, Big Brother After Dark stories, yes. <laughs> if you like. Um, but I feel like, uh, you know, Josh is married, he's got two beautiful yep. kids, and mm. I'm not any of those things, <laughs> but I still feel I shouldn't say any of those stories. <laughs> Uh, good work, Snitch Boy. Uh, okay, what are your thoughts? Oh, thoughts shade. <laughs> what are your thoughts on bringing back the collar on the jersey? Uh, this is from Hugh on Twitter. Uh, one of the MLR teams has a collar. Looks very smart. But I want to know, what's your favourite Wallabies jersey? Oh, mine was the Reebok. Mine was the Reebok. The Reebok. <laughs> nah, the, in nah, 90, uh, my favourite one would probably be the 91 World Cup. That was yeah. sort of the age where I was like, it was a really With good... the Adidas stripes? No, that was 84, sort of. The, just the plain gold. Plain gold with the green cups, maybe? But, yeah, but it was gold? a different gold. I just thought it was a yeah. striking gold. That's my favourite one, like the Campo, Nick Faye Jones, World Cup 1, 91. That's my favourite one. Those, uh, oh, the three striper. I mean, yeah. Like, that, that one was, was epic. Yeah. I, uh, my favourite would be any of the ones I've played in. Uh -huh. Wanker! <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. Uh, speaking um, of wankers... Yeah. <laughs> speaking of wankers, um, th this is a question from Shane Scott. Just says, how are you, Louise? I'm going to answer it for you. That's inappropriate, Shane. <laughs> yeah. How Louise is has got nothing to do with you, and if you are the person sending in pictures, that has to stop as well, mate. So that is not on, Shane. Thank I've got you. another one. It's another video message. How long does this segment go for oh, now? <laughs> it's, it's a long one. Because it's so good. Yeah. yeah. This one's from inside the hub, the Western Force hub. Our good sure. friend of the show, John O'Lance. John C. Riley. Oh, stop. <laughs> oh. Sorry. It's been pretty tough here in the hub. Um, just a hello to everyone at the, the Rugby Show podcast. He doesn't even know our name. Great to see all of you guys. The hub. Um, and your passion for rugby. Um, it's definitely one of the best podcasts going for rugby at the moment. Um, just a question though, I'm just wondering, do we think there is any back rower in Australian rugby at the minute with the same size calves as Stephen Hoyles? <laughs> I wonder, they were a pretty athletic beast. Cheers, mate. Uh, That's such great from John. Obviously, he's still, he just thinks we're a podcast and you yeah, can't see yeah, him in the bathroom. That's all right, <laughs> sign up to the podcast. Yeah. Do we think well, he's smaller calves? He's in a hub tub. No, nah. he was by far the smallest. Like Lockie McCaffrey, maybe, but I think he'd have me. Victor yeah, Matthews, he's not in Australian Lockie rugby. socks almost stay up. Yeah, yeah. Never, no, no, no like, it's a badge of honour, you know. I had, I got, one of my strength and conditions called me swan legs. You know, like, <laughs> that was somehow what he thought would motivate me, called me swan legs. <laughs> so he'd be yelling at me while I'm in the gym or hiding in the gym. Yeah. Come on, swan legs, what are you doing? He was Welsh, by the way. Um, so in short answer, no, Jono. And happy 44th birthday, Jono. You're looking <laughs> remarkable there in your hot tub time machine. How good is that video from yeah. sending you? Yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the standard. I'm going to try and get a few more of these from the, from the current players and perhaps some, some players of the past as well. And Jono has certainly set the bar pretty yeah. high there. And don't forget that you can stay on top of all of the Aussie Rugby Show comings and goings on Instagram and Facebook as well. Louise Ransom, Twitter too. Yeah, we are everywhere and a podcast as well, so make sure you subscribe to that. Guys, we're done for another week. Thank you so much. Sean Maloney, Stephen Hoyles, Drew Mitchell. Thanks to colleagues Thank for Go hosting us in Wallara. Go I'm Louise Ransom. We'll see you next time.